you love me, please don't judge me Got my hands tied, the power's above me Don't shoot the messenger, I'm just a puppet here If you wanna place blame, then look to the puppeteer Family, fortune, envy, jealousy, privilege Passed on, legacy, secret, sabotage, borderline How's it going everybody? It's C-Rad TV back here with another video. So of course it's time to continue on to what if NASCAR had the F1 points format series. So the last time in this series we took a look at the NASCAR Penny series in the 2000s and learned that nothing would have really changed under the F1 points format. And in this part we're going to wrap up the NASCAR Penny series part of this what if series by taking a look at the Penny series in the 2010s to see what would have changed and what would have stayed the same if they used the F1 points format? So yeah, as quickly as this part, of, as this branch of the What If series began, it quickly ends too. So yeah, anyway, and before we jump into this part, of course, make sure you check out the official NASCAR F1 points Twitter and Instagram pages for more exclusive NASCAR with F1 points content. I always post content there daily, so if you want to check that out, make sure you go check it out, man, if you're interested. But yeah, of course, um, anyway, on the screen here is the points format we're going to be using, which is the current at point F1 points format. And for this points format, I'm not doing the bonus point for the fastest lab because NASCAR does a terrible job of keeping track of it. And it's a massive pain in the ass to find it, so we're not doing that. And like I've mentioned a couple times before, we're not doing the double points from 2014 because double points is a stupid and dumb gimmick that manufactures drama, and I'm not doing that shit. And yeah, before we continue on, let me once again stress out that this is just a hypothetical scenario. I know everyone would have raced differently had they used the F1 points format. This is just for fun. So now, with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's jump right into it. So the 2010 seeds, and it was mainly a two-man battle for the championship between DJ Kennington and Don Thompson Jr. Those two were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. In the end, though, late in the season, Don Thompson would fail to be consistent in key moments there when it mattered the most. DJ Kennington would take full advantage of it with pull away late in the season. And DJ Kennington would lock up the 2010 championship with a race to go in the season. So DJ Kennington would still would win the 2010 Penny Series championship still under this format. But this would be his second title under this format. So the 2011 championship, it would have been a two-man battle for the title between Scott Steckley and DJ Kennington. Those two were the class of the field all season in terms of speed and consistency. In the end, though, Scott Steckley would pull away from DJ Kennington late in the season when DJ fell off a bit and couldn't keep up with Steckley near the end of the year. And Scott Steckley, he would win his second Penny Series championship in 2011, locking it up with a race to go in the season. So Scott Steckley would still win his second title in 2011 under this format. So the 2012 season, it was all about DJ Kennington. Like, DJ Kennington was just the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency as he won seven of the 12 races ran in 2012. Despite the best efforts from J.R. Fitzpatrick to keep up with him in consistency, it still wasn't enough to stop D.J. Kennington. And D.J. Kennington would easily pull away in the championship and would lock it up with a race to go in the season. So D.J. Kennington, he would still win the 2012 Pennies Championship under this format, but this would be his third title under this format. So the 2013 championship, it was a three-man battle for the championship between Scott Steckley, DJ Kennington, and Jason Hathaway. Those three were the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. And in the end, the championship will go all the way down to the season finale at Kawartha Speedway, with Scott Steckley entering with a 20-point lead over Jason Hathaway. 
and a 22-point lead over DJ Kennington. So for Jason Hathaway to win the title in the finale, he would need to win the race and would need Scott Steckley to finish 8th or worse. For Kennington to win the championship, Kennington just needed to finish... He needed to win the race and needed Steckley to, fin to finish ninth or worse. For Steckley to win the title, he simply had to finish at least 8th or 7th or better. Or hope that Kennington and Hathaway don't win the finale to lock up the title. In the season finale, or Steckley just need... Yeah, that was it for Steckley. And anyway, in the season finale out of Ka Kawartha... Jason Hathaway's team ran pretty much around the top 10 most of the night. Like, the team missed the setup completely on the car, and Hathaway ended up finishing 11th in the finale at Kawartha. So that officially eliminates Hathaway from the championship. Scott Steckley and DJ Kennington ran up front in the top 5 for a majority of the race. In the end, Kennington would end up finishing 4th in the finale, while Scott Steckley would do everything he would need to to lock up the championship, as Steckley would go on to win the season finale at Kawartha Speedway. And that win would be more than enough for Steckley to lock up the championship by, D uh, by 35 points over DJ Kennington. So Scott Steckley would still win his third champ Penny Series championship in 2013. So for the 2014 season, it was mainly a three-man battle for the championship between L.P. Dumoulin, J.R. Fitzpatrick, and Jason Hathaway. Those three were the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. So under this format, those three will be battling, and regardless of who won the title, it was, someone would walk away with their first championship. In the end, though... It would not be J.R. Fitzpatrick or J Jason Hathaway as both of them would fail to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. L.P. Dumoulin would take full advantage of it and would pull away late in the season. And L.P. Dumoulin would lock up his first Penny Series championship with a race to go in the season. So L.P. Dumoulin would still win the 2014 championship under this format. Now J.R. Fitzpatrick would go on and win the season finale at Kawartha. But all that win did was just make the championship look a lot closer than it actually was. So the 2015 season, it was one of those weird seasons where there wasn't a clear-cut dominant driver all season. Like, there were a number of drivers you could make a solid case for for 2015. In the end, though... Five drivers separated themselves from the rest of the field, and those five being Scott Steckley, Jason Hathaway, Andrew Ranger, L.P. Dumoulin, and Alex Tagliani. Those five were the class of field all year in terms of speed and consistency. In the end, though, L.P. Dumoulin and Alex Tagliani couldn't be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most, and both of them were eliminated with around a race or two to go in the year. In the end... The championship will go all the way down to the season finale at Kawartha Speedway with Andrew Ranger entering with a two-point lead over Jason Hathaway and a five-point lead over Jace over Scott Steckley. So it was a very close championship battle between the two. So it was going to come down to the wire for it. Pretty much whoever finished ahead, the other will have a shot at the title. In the season finale... Scott Steckley and Jason Hathaway ran up front for a majority of the race while Andrew Ranger, his team messed the setup completely on the car. He ran around the bottom of the top 10 all night. In the end, though, Andrew Ranger would finish 10th in the finale, so that would not be enough to win the title, so Ranger would end up being eliminated from the championship battle after he entered the race controlling his own destiny. And in the end, with Steckley and Hathaway running up front, it was set up at the end to where whoever won the race would win the championship. And in the end, Scott Steckley would finish second in the season finale at Kawartha, while Jason Hathaway would go on to win the season finale at Kawartha. And that win would be more than enough for Jason Hathaway to lock up the championship and edge out Scott Steckley by 10 points. So under this format, Jason Hathaway would win his first Penny Series championship in 2015.
So the 2016 season, it was mainly a two-man battle for the championship between rookie Caden Lapsevich and Alex Tagliani. Those two were the class of the field all year when it came to speed and consistency. In the end, though, Alex Tagliani would fail to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. And the rookie, Kane Lapsevich, would take full advantage of him with pull away late in the season. And Kane Lapsevich would lock up the 2016 Penny Series Championship with a race to go in the season. So Kane Lapsevich would still win the 2016 Championship under this format. And Kane Lasovich under this format would still become the first rookie in Penny Series history to win the Penny Series championship in their rookie season. Now the 2017 season, it was a two-man battle for the championship between Alex LeBay and Kevin Lacroix. Those two were the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. And the way the title battle was set up, it was set up to where regardless of who won the title, someone was walking away with their first championship. And in the end, it would not be Kevin Lacroix, as Kevin would fail to be consistent in key moments of the year when it mattered the most. Alex LeBay would take full advantage of it with pull away late in the season. And Alex LeBay would lock up the championship with two races to go in the season making it the, one of the earliest the championship has been locked up in almost a decade. So Abay would win the title, still win the title in 2017. Now Kevin Lacroix would have a solid run to end the year, but all that did was just make the championship look a little closer than it actually was. So for the 2018 season, it was one of those weird seasons where there wasn't a clear-cut dominant driver all season. Like, there were a number of drivers who could have made a case for for the championship. In the end, though, six drivers separated themselves from the rest of the field. And those six being LP Dumoulin, Alex Tagliani, DJ Kennington, Cole Powell, Kevin Lacroix, and Mark antoine Cameron. Those six were the class of the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. In the end, though, Cole Powell, DJ Kennington, Kevin Lacroix, and Mark Antoine Cameron all failed to be consistent in key moments of the season when it mattered the most. And those four would be eliminated with a race or two to go in a season, respectively. So in the end, the championship would go all the way down to the season finale at Jusaka Motor Speedway in Hamilton, Ontario, with LB Dumoulin entering with a 10-point lead over Alex Tagliani. So Tagliani need to finish a few spots ahead of Dumoulin to win the title, while Dumoulin just need to stay close to Tagliani to lock up the championship. In the season finale at Jusaka, it was a very anticlimactic finale. Both drivers ran near the bottom of the top 10 throughout most of the race, as it seems both Dumoulin and Tagliani missed the setup completely at, at Jusaka. In the end, Tagliani would struggle, and he would end up finishing in the race 13th a lap down. While LP Dumoulin at that point just did everything he needed to to win the title by default. As Dumoulin would finish 10th in the season finale. And that 10th place finish would be more than enough for Dumoulin to win the championship over Alex Tagliani by 11 points. So LP Dumoulin would still win his second Penny Series championship under this format in 2018. So for the 2019 season, it was mainly a two-man battle for the championship between Andrew Ranger and Kevin Lacroix, as those two were to class the field all year in terms of speed and consistency. And yes, your eyes are not deceiving you. In 2019, the Penny Series did approve the number placement change. However, the Penny Series made it optional to where if you wanted to move the number back, you could if you want. So yeah, in the Penny Series, now you have some cars that have the number stay where it normally is as tradition. Some move it closer to the left to the front tires. Other teams move this number to the rear tires. And then you have Ranger Ranger and Kevin Lacroix's case, where they just move the number all the way to the rear quarter panel. So yes, the number placement did uh, come into effect in 2019, and here are two examples of the number on the rear quarter panel. And now this video just got a bunch of dislikes because because I know a lot of fans hate the number placement, especially with the one coming in Cup in 2021 too.
with the Gen 7 car. Be honest, I really don't give a shit about the number placement, to be honest. As long as the car runs well and doesn't, racing doesn't look like complete shit, then I'm okay with it. And as long as the paint schemes don't look like complete dog shit, then I'm okay with it. I mean, if the number placement works well with the paint scheme, then a okay. But anyway, continuing on, in the end, getting back on topic, in the end, the championship battle will go all the way down to the season finale at Jusaka Motor Speedway in Hamilton, with Andrew Ranger entering with a 20-point lead over Kevin Lacroix. So Kevin Lacroix have, would have to win the race, and Andrew Ranger would need to finish 8th or worst. For Laquad to win the championship, Ranger locks it up with either a finish a seventh or better, or if Laquad finishes second or worst. In the season finale at Jusaka, both Andrew Ranger and Kevin Laquad ran top five throughout most of the race. They ran up front. In the end, Kevin Laquad would end up finishing fifth, while Andrew Ranger did everything he would need to to lock up the title by finishing fourth in the season finale. And that fourth place finish would be more than enough for Andrew Ranger to lock up the 2019 Penny Series Championship by 22 points over Kevin Lacroix. So Andrew Ranger would still win the title in 2019, but this would be his second title under this format. So yeah, anyway, that's going to wrap it up here for this part of What If Series. So quite a few things would have happened in the Penny Series under this F1 points format. We would have had a number of close championship battles. Like in terms of championship battles that went down to the season finale, we had four title battles go down to the season finale. And we had only one title change under this format, which was in 2015. So yeah, other than that, nothing really changed under the F1 points format. In the 2010s for the Penny Series. Like the only major change we saw was the Pennies was the name changement from Canadian Tire Series to the Penny Series. Which is what we have today. And then the number placement of 2019. The optional number placement. Where, where actually when it first came out. I believe not many Canadian fans were pissed about it as American fans. were are about the Cup Series number placement coming in 2022. Then again, I think Canadian NASCAR fans are honestly just built differently from American NASCAR fans. No offense. I mean, then again, I really don't complain about a lot of goddamn things. Like, I really do not care about the number placement in the Cup Series in 2022. As long as the car runs well, and as long as the paint scheme doesn't look like complete dog shit, then I'm okay with it. But yeah, anyway, that's just where I stand with it. So, yeah, a couple of things would have changed for sure. Now, the Penny Series, like I mentioned before, we are going to be revisiting the Penny Series for 2020 in the second last part of this series. When we do the 2020 season for the other series, for the other active NASCAR series we have today. So you have that to look forward to. So the Penny Series will be coming back later on in the later on in the series. So yeah, next time on the What If Series, we're going to be starting the next leg of this What If Series by taking a look at the... We went modified series to see what would have changed and what would have stayed the same under the F1 points format. And if anyone's wondering for the Penny Series, yes, I plan on doing more Penny Series races in 2022. I, I am thinking about doing uh, trying to go to all of the Penny Series races if I can in, in, uh, that are in Ontario. So that would include Delaware Speedway along with Flamborough and Sunset and Canadian Tire Motorsports Park. I mean, I've heard a couple rumors about the Penny Series possibly doing the dirt race at Oswegan, which is two hours away from me, so I would possibly go to that race too. And I know, I know when Indy, if Indy Car um does the still does the street race in Toronto, usually the Penny Series runs that same weekend too. I mean, I would definitely do the Penny Series race in, if it runs on the streets of Toronto. And if the Penny Series does go back to Kawartha, I would go. I would go for that race too. So yeah, uh, like like in terms of all the tracks in Ontario for the Penny Series, like Delaware's the closest one easily, which is like 45 minutes away. And then all the other tracks are anywhere between two hours and three and a half hours away from me for the Penny Series. Like I believe the furthest one away is um, maybe, um, uh, I want to say either Sunset or Canadian Tire Motorsport Park would all probably be the furthest ones away from me, which is around a three and a half hour drive, which is doable. I'm okay with that kind of drive, but yeah.
That's so, so yeah, if you're looking, wondering if I'm going to do any more Penny Series races in the future, possibly 2022, yeah. And more vlogs for sure coming out. So y'all got that to look forward to. So yeah, anyway, that's going to wrap it up here. And the next, and the first part of Wheel of Modifieds with F1 points, it comes out depending on how fast I make it. So yeah, that's all I got to say. Hope everyone's a great day and I'll see you on whatever I make next. Peace out.